Hayne agreed that I'm very worried about them fellas. Um, I had the um, opportunity of sharing a tour bus with them a year ago. I'm sad to say that um, they're still alive and kicking. They swing, which is one of the hardest things to get Brits to do, is to not just swing musically, but to get what James Brown and Michael Jackson call get out themselves. It's, it's every form of American music you can think of, whether it's jazz, blues, folk, rock. It's good barroom music, I think, is the, uh, the best way to describe it. Drinking music. Yeah, good drinking music. We don't drink, we don't swear. It's such a hard job. We don't do anything. We don't even masturbate. <laughs> there he goes, lay down. It's all in the sound. Chasing the shadow. Things changed last year. We had an album out before and done a little bit mini touring around the UK. And when the Buzz Above came out last year, there was suddenly a lot of interest in the band. And we got to do South by Southwest. We got an agent in America, started playing there. Uh, we did a few TV appearances around these prison gigs that we were doing. But one rock group is bucking the trend for grand occasions by performing in prisons. Jane Agrita is one of London's top country blues bands. They've teamed up with Wrapped, a drug rehabilitation charity. Their mission, stop addiction, stop crime. Uh, we started playing festivals for the first time ever. And the band's been going for a few years, but that all started to happen last year. And then we toured the West Coast with Tony Joe White. We flew into LA and we found out that one of the stations, one of the, I think the biggest commercial mm -hmm. station out there, had been playing our single nine to five every single day for a week running up to our show. And we got out there, we'd already been touring in the UK, we were as tight as we would ever be as a band. When we finished the tour in November, I think the other two band members were just dying to go home and get a good night's sleep and just, I mean, Hugo's words were, I need a year off. Will we make it to the church on time and I've been running down the road of peace. One Mississippi. There's, there's different women in the world. There's <laughs> tall women who are there to be taught and there's home women who are there to be homed. I just want a wife. Hugo toured and then met a home woman on tour, if that makes any sense. He met a girl and she wasn't going to put up with the touring. And I don't think he really knew what he wanted anymore and then decided he didn't really want to do that anymore. Gus, similarly, I think he was still up for doing it, but he wasn't enjoying it at all. He wanted to be home with his wife. It gets to the point where it doesn't really fit anymore. And then mm -hmm. um, we try very hard to be create as much space for everyone as we can. But there, there's times when people start to then resent you because it's not working the way they want. After the tour, I had a little bit of time off, uh, I think over Christmas, and then um, January, you pretty much had the, the next album kind of half written and, and kind of ready to, to be developed. And so we found ourselves in a position where we, we needed to build a new band. We started auditioning, I got out of the blue, I got an email from a guy saying, I heard through the grapevine you were looking for a guitarist and um, my son would like to audition. He said he was jamming with um, Alabama 3 at Tenby, asked Larry Love for a reference. And Matt's the best guitar player I've seen live, certainly in this country. What I got really drawn to was his acoustic blues playing, his acoustic slide playing. Then Matt picked up an electric guitar, to my horror to start with. I thought, no, no, you're so good at what you do. And played a couple of notes and said, cool, this is, this is very cool. who's fantastic, amazing harmonica player and has added a lot to the, the kind of dynamic of the band. Paul the Razor Sandy on upright bass, which for me is a real treat. It wasn't just the playing side of it that we were kind of looking for, we were interested in the kind of personalities of people who would kind of be in for the long haul as well. We did three rehearsals, the night of the third rehearsal we did a gig, the night of the fourth rehearsal we did a gig, 
and then we went and made the record and it was a very satisfying experience. Down, down. You can't bring me around. You can't bring me around when I fall. We recorded it as a band, I think, which is the kind of main difference. Um, in as much as I mean when we were writing the material, it was all we were all in the same room developing it together from you know an arrangement point of view, from a dynamic point of view. We had um, the drums downstairs and Matt and me in the living room and we had Will out with his harmonica out in the corridor and Paulie with his double bass would make such a racket it was up in the bedroom upstairs and we got to mix it in New York um, with Greg Duffin which is brilliant with the exchange rate and stuff it was cheaper to fly to Williamsburg live onto the onto the tape no messing around it's tearing me apart and now I'm down It's more raw and it's rougher around the edges, um, but it's a band. You can hear that it's a band. You can hear musicians playing off against each other. and the area. That's a good way of putting it.